Yeah. has been meteoric. His first motion picture, Risky Business, was released in 1983 and grossed a phenomenal $70 million. While audiences were still laughing at Tom Cruise in scenes like this, Tom hit it big again with his starring role in All the Right Moves. You just sit there in your office. Scholarship here, no scholarship there. He goes, he stays. Who in the hell gave you that power? I look at you. Um, the two movies that you've just done have catapulted you into enormous fame, a, a, a certain kind of success so similar to Christie's. Do you think that something like that could happen to you? Well, sure, I think it's in anyone. Uh, I mean, you feel a tremendous amount of pressure and everything, but... but who places the pressure on you? I mean, it's... It's pressure. I mean, who can place pressure on anyone but yourself? I mean, each thing that I've done, risky business, all the right moves, you know, taps, the outsiders, um, I am not concerned... I'm, I'm interested in my personal growth, what's going to make me happy, not how much money am I going to make, not what film is going to, like, you know, oh, really, you know, yeah, you know, make me more visible. Did you think that you were a good-looking person and that, therefore, you had all the accoutrements that were necessary in order to possibly think of an acting career in films? No. I, I mean, when... I guess when anyone looks at themselves in the mirrors, I mean, I, I see more so my weaknesses as a person and somehow... I mean, I never look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, you know, wow, I should... Hey, look at that face, you know, you should be an actor. <laughs> no. I want to know what motivated you. What motivates you to want to, to make the right move? <laughs> to make the right... <laughs> in this the risky time, business. In this risky <laughs> business, Brennan. <laughs> it doesn't I, spring I, from out of the sky. No, I guess, uh, I guess it goes back to family and a sense that I grew up with of a sense for um, doing things your way, you know, and yet doing things that are creative and healthy. I remember uh, one of the best Christmases I had, uh, my, my parents got divorced and I was like 12 years old. I was living in Louisville, Kentucky, and we didn't have any money. And so what we did was is a month before Christmas, um, the gift was, is that every time, you know, you did something good, you got to put straw in the manger or something, and, and you had to, you pick, we picked names out of the hat, and I have three sisters and, and my mother at that point, and it was just us five, and uh, we would do something good for that person, you know, throughout the whole month until Christmas Day, and then, you know, you told that person, unless they figured it out already who it was. But I, it's all, I mean, through everything, through such the hard times, our family kind of geared things, made things easier to keep things positive, opposed to dwelling on, hey, you know, look, it's Christmas, and, you know, we don't have any money to, like, buy all these gifts. I mean, it was the important thing was, is that we're together, and we're healthy, and enjoy the moment. Enjoy today. It must have been very difficult at age 11 or 12 to suddenly realize that the family unit had broken up and that your parents had divorced. How did you deal with it? Well, on a, on a child, I, I guess I'm still kind of going through that stuff, feeling guilt about divorce, you know, and, and for years I ignored it, you know, I kind of shut that off from my life. But I think that, I think the thing is, is that I, it was harder on my little sister. Sure, it's, it's painful, you know, always. You've lived in a household, basically, with women, for yes. the most part. How has that affected your outlook on, on women and the roles that you have chosen in films? I love women. I mean, I, I come from women, very strong women. I mean, my mother is very... Um, all of them, all the girls are very independent and strong women. So somehow I don't feel as threatened by a woman, I mean, uh, I, I feel very comfortable with women. I get this feeling that you wish to be extremely protective of the, the, that
that other side of your life. Even though your father is alive and you have a stepfather today, you were the man of the house. And therefore, in the traditional sense that we have come a oh, long yeah. way, <laughs> you still are the father figure to all those women. Are you? I, I guess I felt that way. I mean, I... Yes, I did. I mean, I was always like, you know, the guys that they went out with and stuff, and kind of looking the guy and saying, you know, Leanne or Marion or Cass, you know, come on, what are you doing with this guy? You know, and not being nice to him if he came over or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I guess I, I always felt that, that I wanted, you know, in terms of taking care of things around the house, like if something was broken, you know, I was always the one that they came to if like a gold chain was all knotted up or something. Say, Tommy, you know, come here and go fix it. So I, I guess, I guess to a certain extent, but I mean, they can take care of themselves, you know. You met Rebecca on Risky Business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did she become an instant friend, or did it develop? I mean, well, how did she become your friend? Rebecca de Mornay is an amazing person, and I have a lot of respect for her as a person. I mean, that's why I'm in the relationship. I mean, because she's a friend. Is she an extension of you? Ah, uh, is she an extension of me? Yes, I, yes, she is. In what ways? Um, it's like explaining the taste of, of chocolate ice cream. I mean, what's chocolate ice cream taste like? I mean, I, it's, it's, uh, why do I feel comfortable in blue jeans? You know, I mean, I, I, I like blue jeans, you know, they feel comfortable. It's just driving me a little bit crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a strange jump in transition. Okay. There was a point in your life when you almost entered the priesthood. Wow, you did your homework. <laughs> I, I really never entered... Yes, I went to St. Francis Seminary when I was a freshman in high school. I mean, I really never considered becoming a priest. And at that point in my life, uh, I was... Two years after the divorce, Your somehow, divorced. yeah, my parents divorced, and somehow I, you know, I, I quite haven't figured out why I did that, w why I, I think I, I needed, uh, when I went there, it was like a very secure environment, you know, we're boarding school, and I guess I think I just needed that, I needed. Did you feel at peace with God? Did I feel at peace with God? Yes, I did. When I feel good with myself, I feel at peace with God. I mean, when I feel that, then I feel at peace with God. Do you privately pray? Do I privately pray? <laughs> um, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Do you want to ask him? What do I ask him? I ask him... Uh, I guess what I ask of myself to be help me. I guess is a... I myself pray. I think lots of us do. But sometimes we never like to talk about it because it is such a personal thing. Except I don't mind sharing and telling you that when I'm in trouble, and even not in trouble, I say thank you. Yes. And yes. I say, if I am in trouble, Help. <laughs> Help. I never pray for specifics. I just pray for right guidance. Yes. Mostly, I guess, become more honest with myself. Mm. Tom Cruise, I think you're terrific. Thank you. I don't think I could have asked for anyone to be more honest and more honest.